Hello friends and welcome back to the channel for another quick champion guide where today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most requested champs in MCOC history, Beta Ray Bill. So Bill is really easy to pick up and learn. He is incredibly fun to play. We're going to cover his rotation in both short and long fights. I'm going to cover what relic you should use for him and I'm also going to show you specifically why he is so good for future Ant-Man who remains one of the most annoying defenders in the game. So before we jump into the gameplay as you usual, let's go ahead and cover the question that I know some of you have already fast forwarded this video to get to, and that is, does Beta Ray Bill need to be awakened? And the answer here is absolutely not. So if we take a look at his signature ability, it has three different parts to it. The first part is an increase to his burst potency, which at max sig is 40%. Now that's a very significant damage increase, but as I think you're going to see in this guide, for the majority of short and medium fights with Bill, the damage increase that you're going to get from this is really going to feel like overkill. Now the second bullet point reduces the cooldown of his unstoppable by up to 10 seconds, but again, the majority of fights you probably aren't really going to feel like this is necessary. And then finally, you're going to get up to a 100% damage reduction while unstoppable. Now I've been using Bill in Tier 1 Alliance War for several wars this season, and I haven't really noticed this being a problem at all. I suppose it could be useful down the line in Battlegrounds, maybe incursions against a you know a defender with a really high attack rating, uh, but for the time being, I really don't think this is necessary. Now, I took Bill to rank 3 almost immediately after getting him this month, and I've had no regrets so far with that decision. Alright, with all that being said, let's jump right into some gameplay. Alright, the very first thing you want to know about Beta Ray Bill is that your attacks have a 10% chance to inflict a shock passive, and these passives last for 25 seconds. You'll notice that they're doing very little damage over time, but when they end, they're going to deal a burst of energy damage. Starting a combo with a medium attack or using your special one is going to speed up the expiration rate of these shocks by around 300%. We'll talk in a minute or two here about why that's important. So in most fights, you want to build up to somewhere between two and three bars of power because you want to start with your special two, and then you're going to want to have a little bit of a head start for your special one soon after. Once you're at two bars of power you want to bait out a special if necessary so that your opponent doesn't have any power available and then from here you want to back up and start charging your heavy while charging your heavy you'll gain an unstoppable buff and all of your buffs are going to be paused as you charge your heavy you're going to be gaining intensify buffs and these are going to stack up to five now notice here that at the start of the heavy charge the opponent is inflicted with an intimidate passive this is going to help them back up and hold block, which will allow you to continue charging heavy until you get all five of those intensity buffs. Once you hit max stacks there, the Intimidate is replaced by an Infuriate, which will then cause the defender to dash in. When they do this, you want to use your special two to intercept them. If you play a lot of Scorpion, this is very similar to how you would use him. Your special two is going to grant you a 15% energized buff, but remember, if you fully charged your heavy attack, your five intensify buffs have now doubled the potency of this energized to 30%. The special two is also going to inflict a bunch of shocks on the opponent. Now, in a short fight, your next goal is to time your special one so that you are in the middle of the animation when the shocks expire. And if you do this successfully, the burst damage from the shocks ending is increased by 200%. So recall that these shocks last for 25 seconds, which in most fights feels like an eternity, right? So this is kind of where you want to carefully use combos that start with a medium attack in order to speed up the expiration rate of those shocks. And you ideally want to use your special one when there's about a third, maybe a quarter of the total duration left on those shocks. And you can accomplish this in a variety of ways depending on how much power you have at the moment. Like for example, if you are not yet at your special one, you probably want a full combo into a striker, into another combo, and then use your special one. That's two mediums. That'll shorten the duration by quite a bit and give you a bunch of power for your special one. If you're close to your special one, you can use a shortened combo with a medium attack, block beta heavy, and then go into the special one from there. Or if you're just trying to stall because you've accidentally gained too much power and you don't want to get back to your special two, you can just do like a parry medium, parry medium, and then go into your special one from there. Whichever way you decide to do it, when the shocks expire during your special one, they're going to deal a huge burst, and in short fights like you'd find in Battlegrounds or War, this is probably going to be enough 
to KO the defender. In this example here, Winter Soldier has a bit more health than a Battlegrounds fight, so one burst wasn't enough, but with our shocks refreshed and our energized buffs still paused, we can easily get up to a second special one almost immediately, trigger a second burst, and end the fight. All right, let's take a look at that same fight in real time. So at the start of the fight here, I'm just using my basic combos, working our way up to between two and three bars of power. If we apply some shocks with their basic attacks, that's great. Remember, we will be guaranteeing a bunch of them from our special two, so any that we can apply before then is just kind of like an added bonus. Remember, we want to make sure that we're a bit above two bars of power, and once we're there, bait out a special from Winter Soldier. Once he's done, we're going to start charging our heavy attack, waiting for him to dash in, and then special intercepting with a special two. That's going to refresh our shocks and add a bunch more. You can see we're at nine. Now the goal here is to get to our special one, use our medium attacks to shorten the timer on those shocks, and then we want to throw our special one with about a quarter of the duration remaining so that the shocks expire during our special one animation. And you saw we got a nice burst damage there. And then since we're already close to a second special one with the shocks refreshed, we're just going to rinse and repeat here, throw the special one again. The shocks are going to expire mid-special and a second nice burst, and that's all she wrote. All right, let's quickly review the damage rotation for short fights. Again, you want to build up to between two and three bars of power. Just over two is fine, but you definitely don't want to go too far. And then bait out a special attack once you're there. Charge your heavy after that to pause your buffs. You're also going to gain your intensify buffs. Remember that the opponent will start out with an intimidate passive, so they will back up and hold block. And then once you've hit the cap on those intensify buffs, they will dash in, and then you can use your special two when they do so. After that, use your combos that start with a first medium attack to shorten the shock timer, and then time your special one so that the shocks expire while you're in that special one animation, and that's going to increase the burst damage by 200%. And then repeat step six if necessary, but again, in most short fights, it probably won't be. Now for longer fights, you ideally want to keep his shocks maxed out at 12 and then repeatedly refresh them. And this is a bit trickier to do because it requires you to be much more mindful of what you're doing during the fight. So in this fight against Labyrinth Star-Lord, I'm again going to start off by building up to my special two. And if I get some shocks along the way, I'll start my combos with a light attack in order to avoid that accelerated expiration. And then from here, bait out a special attack, heavy charge into the special two, which is going to give you your intensify buffs and the 20 hit buff pause. All right, real quick, I want to tell you this. It's very important. The buff pause from the heavy charge is critical in these longer fights because it's what enables your specials to reapply the shocks when they burst. And you always want that buff pause active before you start bursting those shocks with your special ones. Otherwise, when they expire, they're just going to go away instead of reapplying. Okay, so after the special two finishes, I'm going to be taking advantage of that 30% energized buff to build back up to a second special two before the 20 hits from my buff pause are used up. And again, I'm taking care here wherever I can to start my combos with a light attack in order to keep those shocks active for as long as possible. Using my special two here again to add more shocks and refreshing the ones that I had on him already. Now at this point in the fight, you may or may not be at the cap of 12 shocks, but either way, We've lost the buff pause, so we need to do a third special two in order to re-trigger it before starting our special one spam. So here I've built back up to another two bars of power, baiting out that special from him, and then doing the heavy charge into the special two once again. This is going to re-trigger our intensify buffs and also re-trigger the buff pause. So at this point in the fight, we're pretty much ramped and we're ready to start closing it out with our special one spam. So we've built up to a bar of power and now we want to time our special one so that the shocks expire in the middle. We are close to two bars here, so we're kind of waiting it out a little bit here, waiting for him to dash in and then sidestepping into the special one. It's really quick, but that first burst did about 422,000 damage and the buff pause is still active. So all 12 shocks have been refreshed by that special one. All right, I'm gonna pause it here real quick because I wanna point something out to you. Notice that our shocks are actually doing a lot more damage now than they were earlier in the fight. And that's because the special one triggers a fury buff and the attack rating that you're getting from that fury is also being applied to the shocks when they are being reapplied by your special attack. Okay, we're all set for a second special one. We still have the buff pause active, which means it's going to refresh the shocks for a second time. 
and that second burst does a cool 624,000 damage. And again, I want to point out that with the two Furies, our shocks are doing even more damage now than they were before. Now at this point we want to re-trigger our buff pause because we don't want to lose those two Furies, so we heavy charge back into the special two that refreshes all 12 shocks once again. They are still ticking for quite a bit of damage, and now we're going to do this third burst with a special one here, again before the buff pause ends, and this special one is going to do a whopping 827 thousand damage. You can see that huge chunk of Star Lord's life just disappear from his health bar. It's really cool. And we're going to finish it out with another special one. Doesn't matter. More than enough damage to kill him. That's 3.4 million health gone in just under three minutes with no ouchy masteries, no boosts, and the only synergy I had going here was White Magneto for that passive stun. One final thought on this long rotation, keep in mind here that in all of the examples I've shown you today, it's been with an unduped Beta Ray Bill, and that the burst damage numbers that we saw in that Star-Lord fight of 421,000, 624,000, and 827,000 could all be theoretically increased by up to 40% at max sig, which would bring them all to 590,000, 874,000, and a whopping 1.2 million damage, respectively. This dude is capable of hilarious levels of burst damage. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that although in a long fight you can definitely get by with just repeating the short fight rotation over and over, and that's certainly the easier approach here, I'm not going to lie, keeping his shocks active for the entire fight is a lot faster. Now there is a big skill ask here, I'm also not going to lie to you about that. It is definitely going to require some practice to get right. Okay, real quick, let's go through the long fight rotation. It starts off very similar to the short fight rotation. You want to heavy charge into your special two to trigger your buff pause and also get all five of those intensify buffs. Then you want to use that 30% energized buff to get back to your special two again before the buff pause expires. So within 20 basic attacks, you want to get back up to your special two. If you use that special two while the buff pause is still active, you're going to add shocks and then also refresh all existing shocks. Then your buff pause is probably about to expire, so you want to get back up to your special two for a third time, heavy charge into it to re-trigger the buff pause, and then from there you're probably already at the cap of 12 shocks, and you're ready for your big special one burst. So from there, special one as the shocks are expiring for a fury buff and for the burst damage, and again, as long as that buff pause is active, you will reapply all of the shocks with that increased potency from the fury buff. And then you should be able to get to a second special one again, before that buff pause expires to refresh and reapply those shocks. And then from there, your buff pause is probably on its way out or already done. You want to zoom back up to that special two and then heavy charge into it before your Furies wear off. Uh, and that will re-trigger that buff pause. And then you can go back into additional special one bursts from there. All right, I want to cover two other additional items before we call it a day on this guide, and the first one is your Relic. Now, one of the unique aspects of Beta Ray Bill is that he has a specific bonus outlined in his kit if you pair him with the Thor Relic. So using any rarity of the Thor Relic with Beta Ray Bill will increase the potency of all of his buffs by 25%. So this is going to include the Energized buff and also include your Furies. No other champion is coded to work specifically with a relic like this. So if you have a Thor relic, it absolutely needs to be on Beta Ray Bill or you're going to be leaving a lot of damage on the table. The second thing I want to cover is what makes Bill so good against future Ant-Man. And for that, we're going to use one of my war fights from this past season. So at the start of the fight here, notice this blue buff on me. This is a steady buff. And Bill is going to gain it at the start of any fight against a tech champion or when any of his immunities trigger. And it causes glancing abilities to fail. So right away against Fan, you have 20 seconds at the start of the fight where he will not be able to trigger his glancing. So I start the fight with a medium attack, which pulverizes armor up buffs. This is a passive effect. It's not a nullify. It's not an armor break. It just kind of works. So again, we don't have to wait out that first armor up like you normally would in a fight against him. We can just go ahead and remove it. Now here, our steady buff has ended, which means there is a brief window where we can glance, but watch what happens when the power detonation timer on us expires. 
Because that power detonation triggers a power drain and Bill is immune to power drain, the steady buff will return immediately. So now even though future Ant-Man has three armors, they won't cause us to glance and we can remove them one at a time with our medium attacks. And then from here the rest of the fight is just the normal rotation that I've already demonstrated. Glancing, probably my least favorite mechanic in MCOC, it's a plague on this game. And finally having a champ who can just turn it off is well worth the cost of ranking up Beta Ray Bill, in my opinion. That's going to do it for another champion guide, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you found something good in it for you. If you found this guide helpful, please do me a favor. Share it with your friends. Share it with your alliance mates. And if you've made it this far into the guide, please leave me a comment down below that says, Bill loves to horse around. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>